I want to preface this video and say that I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing for the long term or longevity of the human race, but I think this is one of the most interesting developments in AI that we've seen. And I wanted to talk about rabbit.tech in this video. Now they're being sold out repeatedly. The second batch has already sold out. It's pre-orders. It might not even do what it's supposed to do, but what it's looking like is it's going to be a little phone slash computer that can automate tasks. I think they're trying to look at it from like becoming a whole new piece of tech. What I think they should be doing instead is focusing more on becoming like Raspberry Pis, but um, to automate anything. But basically what it is, is it's a personalized operating system through a natural language interface, meaning that you can speak with this thing and it will change music is what they're talking about. But I think it, it's going to have wide ranging applications to, to a lot of different things. So it has a SIM card slot as well. So are they just trying to become the next phone? Because I think that's pretty wild if that's what they're going for. $199. Anyway, let's go to slash research here and we'll read a little bit of what they've uh, what they've got on this landing page. This isn't sponsored or anything like that, obviously. Um, I'm just talking about it because I think it, it's interesting and I haven't seen many people talking about it yet. But what I could see this doing would be a lot of the tasks that I do on Excel and translating large CSV documents and a lot of like large content creation which takes a lot of time because sometimes cells aren't formatted in a way that you can just drag down to repeat the formula. So something like this to replace that, maybe, I don't know, creating featured images, automating like that process as well. That'd be amazing. So there's a lot of potential in this and I, I do think it's really, really interesting. I think when it first gets released, it's not going to be that good. But in a year or two, this will be super advanced if enough people adopt it and enough people help train it. So we've developed a system that can infer and model human actions on computer applications, perform the actions reliably and quickly, and is well suited for de deployment in various AI systems and operating systems. Our system is called the Large Action Model, LAM. Enabled by recent advances in neurosymbolic programming, the LAM allows for the direct modeling of the structure of various applications and user actions performed on them without a transitory representation such as text. The LAM system achieves results competitive with state-of-the-art approaches in terms of accuracy, interpretability, and speed. Engineering the LAM architecture involves overcoming both research challenges and engineering complexities. From time to time, from real-time communication to virtual network computing technologies, we hope that our efforts could help shape the next generation natural language driven consumer experiences. This is the, I guess, promotion video. I don't really want to watch that. <laughs> <clears throat> so the proliferation of personalized experiences delivered via mobile applications has been a dominant theme of the last decade of personal computing enabled by graphical user interfaces. These applications allow interaction without any programming experience under such a a scheme service providers enhance hardware with various software add-ons while hardware manufacturers enable new types of applications through new features forming a symbiotic relationship the advent of neural language models a breakthrough in natural language processing has enabled new capabilities in machine comprehension of a wide range of natural language related problems in daily life with the equally and then there's there's these two footnotes here with which i think are at the bottom here so maybe we can just jump straight down Oh, okay, these are just, uh, yeah, footnotes. That's fine. With the equally rapid commodification, speech recognition, and synthesis, where cost and latency have dropped below the real-time barrier while man maintaining fidelity, we can already build machines that understand human intentions with sufficient depth and nuance and context with realistic effort and cost. So what I'm understanding is what they're saying is instead of having to have, like, a massive model, like... Um, Language models are ill-equipped to comprehend applications with raw text. We measure the tokens required to represent common web applications across different snapshots in raw HTML. State-of-the-art language models with their existing tokenizers 
have trouble fitting the raw text application representation within their context window. I understand what this is talking about. Basically, if you want to, I don't know, uh, book a Google flight, it's going to use 180,000 tokens, which will cost, I, I, I don't know, I, I, maybe like $3, I reckon, just to book a Google flight because it has to process that amount of text because it has to go through all the different pages. If you've ever booked a flight, you'll know just how annoying it is to book a flight. So it's gonna, it's outside the context window of even, it's g almost within the context window of GPT for 1106 to do it in one uh, context to book a Google flight, just because of the amount of stuff it has, the amount of tokens it actually has to um, process in order to book the flight. Instead, what they've done is they're basing it on actions. So I actually did just watch this video, so I think I'm going to show this video because it does explain it very, very well. A large action model, or as we call it, LAM, is a new foundation model that understands human intentions on computers. Through it, we can teach RabbitOS how to use specific applications. In this video, I'm teaching a rabbit how to book an Airbnb. While I'm operating normally as a human on the left screen, watch closely on the right as the large action model is learning all my inputs and imitating my behavior in real time. So I'm trying to plan a trip to Barcelona with my wife and my daughter. The first thing I'm going to do is navigate to the Anywhere option, and I'm going to type Barcelona in the search field. The system's suggesting Barcelona, Spain, which is exactly where we want to go. Using the website... So you can see at the bottom here what it's actually doing. It Instead of taking the entire page as an HTML document and understanding the page as text, it's understanding the page as just select 2023... Uh, 10, 15 on the calendar. So that's super, super interesting. It's almost completely changing the what well, it is. It's completely changing the way that it can a, a large model can do something for you. And it can do it for much cheaper and it can be trained much more easily. That's calendar tool. I'm going to mark our check-in on the 15th and check out on the 21st. Now I'll click add guests and adjust the members accordingly. Now let's hit the search button and see what pops up. Since we love the beach, let's make sure to select the beachfront option. And for a more private experience, I'm going to select entire home so we have the whole place for ourselves. For the budget, I'll set a maximum at 400,000 won and a minimum of 100,000 so that all the options are within our price range. We're going to need at least two bedrooms to make sure we all have our own space. Finally, with all of our preferences set, we've got plenty of options that fit the bill. I'll just start browsing for the perfect one. Each training only takes a few minutes and does not require access to an application programming interface, also known as an API, nor do you need anything installed on your device. You only need to train each workflow once. Let's try to use RabbitOS and instead book a room in London. My extended family is going to London. It's going to be eight of us and four kids. We're thinking of December 30th to January 5th. It's not set in stone yet, so I just want some general options. Can you look it up for me? Sure, I can help you with that. The first option is a home in Portobello Muse House, priced at 1,348,000. Okay, so I think this is like a very, very basic use case. But it's if, if that's all it takes to train it to book an Airbnb, just you do it once and it sees all the fields that you fill out and then the next time you can change the numbers, but it's still in the same fields. So the, the fields are always the same. Then that's pretty interesting. I mean, that's super, super interesting. This is like, this could replace a lot of things, a lot of people very, very easily. Appointment schedulers, um, yeah, just personal assistants, that kind of stuff. This could really, really be interesting. Now, I don't think anything really like this exists. I, I don't know, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it seems to me like this is something new. One of the most interesting parts of this page is the, like, the, the GIF they have here of just all the different things that you could automate. Um, I am super, super excited. I really, really want to get one of these. Um, but they keep selling out.
So yeah, this is how it works. It understands everything as I've seen these before. It's really, really interesting. Actually, I used to, I, I do, I should talk about this. <laughs> a lot of people know that I used to, well, I kind of still do play RuneScape and on like RuneScape is a very, very boring game and you have to do the same thing uh, over and over and over. But when you have one of these programs, right, let's say this is a program. You have to, before, before something like Rabbit, you would have to program for every single um, eventuality, okay? Everything, every possible thing that could happen, that could go wrong, that could stop the process, that could, um, you, you would have to code something for every single one of these, okay? And there could be 10,000. So you'd have to code for 10,000 eventualities. And that's what a lot of people did. A lot of people made a lot of money on RuneScape selling bots that could play the game for you. But they were really long, complicated bots because they would have to, you know, try and prepare for anything that could happen, anything that could go wrong, et cetera, et cetera. But with Rabbit, and yeah, that's just true with everything as well, like, uh, print on demand upload automators things like that but with rabbit you can just train train it on one thing so you could upload one red bubble or whatever you could upload one product to your shopify store upload one product and then instead of having to plan for every eventuality it just does the process over and over and over so yeah that's really really interesting to me it would kind of it would be a leap forward in what we're kind of waiting for ChatGPT to to be able to do for us to just to be able, be able to automate more things in our lives. I think Rabbit might actually be slightly wrong in in what they're doing because I think they're trying to focus on mass appeal to anyone and everyone. I think they should be focusing more on businesses and work and how they can help automate people's jobs basically because if i was working a boring ass job that just requires the same thing over and over and over then i would want to be automating that and i would want to be doing it with something like rabbit so yeah i just wanted to give my thoughts on uh lam's large ang large action models um i'm really really excited i really really want to get one of these but again, it just says here, like, this is what I don't like about what they're doing. A plausible use case is operating applications with natural language while driving. Okay, but like, there are way more use cases that you could talk about, like automating parts of your job or whatever it might be. Also, the last thing I want to say is the cool thing about this device is the device itself is like the robot. So you could just... Like I'm, I'm looking at my computer now. Like I, my setup is, I have my, oops, I have my computer monitor here, and then I have my laptop sometimes here, and then I could just always have the rabbit doing some work here. So yeah, that I, I think that's really, really cool because sometimes, like with, um, I think it's called like Microsoft Automator. Power Automate and things like that. Sometimes what it does is it takes over the mouse of your computer, which means you can't use your computer while you're automating something, which would which would suck, obviously, because you still want to have access to your computer. So if this is just a little robot that can like automate your work based on you doing that work once and showing it how it's done, then that could be amazing. But again, it might be snake oil. We don't know yet. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. and. Peace out.